guys, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernov. This is a biography of the first uh, Secretary of the Treasury, founder of the Coast Guard, man responsible for our economic system and keeping the country together, and really awesome dude who also uh, fought with like everybody he met, basically. Great intro, right? <laughs> So this biography is what the musical Hamilton by Lin-Manuel Miranda is based off of. And I listened to the audiobook for this, which is read by Grover Gardner. The audiobook is roughly 10 hours long. The book, I think, is 800 pages-ish. Chernow does a really good job of balancing the histories and the politics, um, the war stuff that makes up Alexander Hamilton's political life, kind of public life versus the private stuff that's going on, the personal stuff, the relationships, the stuff that basically I cared about. Um, and he does a good job balancing it pretty equally. So if you are interested in the politics and the war stuff that is in there without having too much of the personal, but if you're like me and interested in his personal life, this is a good balance. Yes, it does a good job of showing Hamilton's personality and making him feel like a real person and definitely doesn't gloss over Hamilton's faults which he has quite a few of, um, but does also show all the really good stuff he does and legacy that he left, which is pretty freaking ginormous. Um, and he makes the other people in the in Hamilton's life also seem very real, from George Washington uh, to Alexander's wife Eliza to Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, um, Aaron Burr definitely uh, paints the picture of this growing tension between these two men that ultimately led to Hamilton's death. Hamilton's life is this mix of being really improbable and being at the right place at the right time, and also Hamilton, how much his writing and his dedication to his work plays a huge part in his life and the legacy he left. He's also known for the Federalist Papers. He wrote 51 of, I think, 85 or something over the course of six months, and that's like not the only thing he was doing. Like, I can't even imagine writing 50 essays in the six months period, but then he's also a lawyer and he was fighting for getting the Constitution modified. Hamilton was very close with George Washington. Uh, George Washington kind of took him under his wing and during the American Revolution, during the war, he serves as an advisor and a secretary to him to the point that they get to know each other so well that Hamilton is writing almost all of Washington's correspondence with very little, like, editing going on. Like, Washington will read it, make sure that that's what he meant, but Hamilton's pretty much getting it spot on right off the bat each time, to the point that Washington's sending him off to be, like, his his delegate or something to check on other, check on the troops and stuff. I just like to have that much faith. Like, I get... Washington was doing so much, he couldn't possibly physically be everywhere, but the fact that Hamilton was so closely trusted, um, and that that partnership also extends into when Washington was in the White House, and Hamilton becomes the first Treasury Secretary, and how much Washington does this balancing act between, like, trying to support Hamilton, but Hamilton's also got to make the, uh, prove it on his own, basically, with all of his everything he wants to do, and he did so much as Treasury Secretary between setting up the first national bank, getting our currency, um, the U.S. currency to be strong, to, uh, solidifying the national debt. We also see him fighting a lot with Jefferson, Madison, and John Adams, and particularly with Jefferson and Madison, and this leads to kind of our current two-party system. And we do see the constant stuff throughout this with what's going on with Aaron Burr, um, how they started off at the same place. How uh, they are constantly running into each other. Um, they're both from New York, so they're literally in the same city. How uh, they have these different views of life. Um, Aaron Burr was a lot more like, I'm gonna... We kind of see the separation at first where they can like leave their political differences at work and then hang out after work and be civil to each other. But as time goes on, the political stuff keeps building. Um, and the, the tension that turn off, like, translates that tension so well that it feels inevitable, like it was going to happen, like there was no way it wasn't going to. Um, which is scary, but also kind of an impressive narrative. 
to be able to do that. Hamilton's also in charge of founding the Coast Guard um, with the intent to stop smuggling, which is kind of ironic because it's kind of how we won the revolution was this whole thing with smuggling and like getting around the British. But now he's trying to collect the taxes. So as Secretary of the Treasury, he has to start this way to stop that. Um, and he, has, he, he also had this influence on the army as well. At one point during the Adams administration, um, John Adams tries to get Washington to take over the army. He kind of agrees to do this. Um, but Washington only agrees to do that if Hamilton becomes the second in command. And then Hamilton kind of ends up running the army which is cool, and how the two of them, Washington and Hamilton, are pushing towards having a military academy. Hamilton also has the first sex scandal in U.S. political history, and the whole way that went down, and the fact that the only reason that it came out into the public and the way it did was because Hamilton was trying to defend his legacy, because people were trying to say that he was uh, speculating and using U.S. money, and he's saying, no, I actually was paying off this dude who I was sleeping with his wife. Um, and how this like need to clear his name is ultimately his downfall or one of his downfalls. There are several points where it just builds and builds and builds off of each other and he keeps sliding further and further. Um, and then on the personal side, we definitely get to see his family life from his wife, Eliza, to his children, getting to see his relationship with Eliza's sister, Angelica, and his father-in-law, Philip Schuyler, and how important the family was to him and this balance that Hamilton is trying to strike between being the family man and being with with Eliza but also he really is trying to do so much like it's insane the amount of stuff that he did in such a short period of time and really get to see Hamilton's personality come through with uh, how relentless he is he's incredibly strong-willed how he literally could not stop like just completely just one thing after another he's always working on at least one thing if not like five or ten um, and he also couldn't shut up. Like, there's sometimes when it's just like, just stop, just breathe. And he just gets so riled up and so passionate that he becomes his own worst enemy at times. <laughs> um, he was a lawyer for the first murder trial in U.S. history, which is also kind of a cool side note. Um, and the duel with Aaron Burr is such a huge part of his life and his legacy that obviously that becomes part of this book as well. So if this sparked your interest and you want to know more about Hamilton, especially like me, I'm like I am obsessed with the musical. So that was definitely a huge part in why I am reading this book in the first place. So I totally recommend it. Um, I recommend both the book and the musical. They are amazing. Anyway, there is my book review for Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernoff. Um, definitely check it out and peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.